here I have, um, because this one performs my favorite little magic trick. Um, so we have built-in knock-knock feature for this. So double tap on the hood and um, it should pop right open like wow. that. So it's a cool little feature. Um, this one unfortunately doesn't do it, which is why I've got this stunt double over here. Um, but <clears throat> the cool thing is uh, when I open this up, um, you'll notice that we've actually moved to a full e-ink display on the bottom here. Um, and compared to previous generation where it's just an etched design, um, it was cool looking, but it's very limited in functionality in some ways. Um, for one, moving to this, um, <clears throat> when you type on it, you actually get full animations built into the keys, uh, which is something a lot of people like the visual uh, feedback on this device. But not only that, before we had to sit there and decide how big do we make the keyboard versus trackpad. Um, and on a device this small, that um, is actually pretty hard to figure out. Whereas on this one, um, simple tap and you get your trackpad back. And as soon as you start typing again, it disappears when you don't need it. <clears throat> um, along with that, Moon Ink is pretty cool because we can uh, change the keyboard language on it instantly. So you can go back and change it to say something like Japanese or Spanish or anything like that. So somebody who's either learning a new language or uh, is possibly bilingual and finds himself typing in different languages a lot, um, switching back and forth is pretty nice because you don't have to remember all those shortcuts that you typically do in Windows. <clears throat> now, uh, for the typing, we have built-in uh, haptic feedback and audio feedback that you can change. As long as those animations, you can turn those on and off. Um, <clears throat> The next cool thing about the ink is uh, if we move into this drawing tab over here. <clears throat> um, let me do a new page. So if we go here, do a new page. If I want to write down um, something like uh, hello, and um, I'm going to go ahead and copy the text. Um, it can actually convert handwriting into text. Um, we're using something called MyScript engine on this. <clears throat> so you can have your notes. Um, you can take as many pages as you want and just flip through them on this. But if you're wanting to convert something, you can do that on the, into another program or a web browser or anything like that. Um, along with that, you can copy the full page as an image itself um, and paste that either onto the desktop or into a note program. <clears throat> Um, and two other functions I don't have to show you today, um, but you'll also be able to write down mathematical formulas and convert those into uh, text on, you know, in like one or certain programs that accept the, the math standard for that, as well as diagram support. <coughs> um, but it's a cool little thing that you can sit there and draw and sketch. I actually really like it in this mode particularly because I can be reading a web page or a book or something and taking my notes down here. Um, and it's just very simple and fluid. But you can also, um, flip this around, it'll turn off the back screen, it'll ask me a second to double tap um, that I want to use this. And so now I'm using exclusively the ink. This is back off here. Um, and I'm able to save battery life as I want to um, keep doodling down here. So it's a cool feature that allows you to save battery life while you're taking notes. Um, <clears throat> but if I want to flip this back around up here, um, give it a second to open. I'm going to switch this over into um, the next mode that I think is probably the low hanging fruit of these is that um, you can use this for um, reading as well. So we have a PDF here. Um, you have simple navigation so you can just download the, the files to whatever folder you want and navigate to it. Um, but another cool thing about this um, is that if I actually like say with this with a textbook or anything like that, um, I can copy a certain section of the page and if the original source is in color. Uh, when I paste this into another program, it'll actually retain that color uh, format. So it's nice for if you're wanting to mark up a part of a textbook or something like that and keep your notes. Um, and then you can still sit there and swipe between pages. And this acts the same way as the drawing program. You can flip this around, use it exclusively in e-reader mode um, in portrait or landscape. Um, so it's good so you don't have to carry a laptop and a, a Kindle while you're traveling. And it's saving battery life because you're only using the e display, <clears throat> which I'm sure as you know, only consume power once it's actually switching pages mm -hmm. um, or doing an animation. <coughs> um, other changes from last generation that we've made. Um, first, uh, when it comes to the pen technology itself, last generation, you could only write down on this surface. So now you can write um, when you're in that ink mode or you can draw up here and you get 
4,096 points of pressure sensitivity with that. Um, the technology also changed. Before last year, we were using EMR technology. Um, now we're using active AES, uh, <clears throat> which is nice because um, e AES typically doesn't see cursor drift. Um, EMR, you sometimes see it, especially like on the edges of a display, uh, whereas AES, you don't typically see that. So it's um, a little more accurate overall. Um, other changes, uh, the screen size was 10.1 inches before, now we've bumped up to 10.8. Mm -hmm. uh, you also see a resolution bump of 2560 by 1600, whereas last generation was full HD. <coughs> um, <clears throat> we've also added a fingerprint sensor here for Windows Hello capabilities. It's built into the button? Yeah, it's built in, so this is your, your sensor right there. Um, and then other changes have been last generation we had micro USB, so now um, we move to uh, Type C charging. And you have two Type C ports, so there's one more on the, the other side. You have micro SD support up to 526 gigabytes on that, um, but the storage inside this device has also taken a bump. Um, before it was at, I think the maximum was 64 eMMC storage, whereas this generation you have a 128 and a 256 option. Um, of SSD storage instead. So it's SSD and not EMC? Correct. So okay. you're going to see faster, faster storage. Faster performance. Um, <clears throat> and speaking of faster, last year we were on the Atom processor, um, which was a qualm that many people had, just didn't have the oomph we wanted. Um, so this model, we're going to have two options, an M3 and an i5 option on this. So uh, bump up in specs pretty much across the board on this. <clears throat> Um, so we want this to be a little bit more of a performance device, uh, like a lot of users wanted out of it. Um, <clears throat> we will not be doing an Android version this time around. Awesome. Um, only Windows on this. Um, and you also notice I don't have the pen and paper like the last generation had, um, because Movie the Ink allows you to draw directly on it. Um, I think that's the experience a lot of users wanted. <coughs> um, I think I about covered all the changes from last generation. So we tried to take a lot of the feedback from last generation, um, which was the typing experience and the performance of the device mostly. Um, so moving to ink, a lot of us do the animations. We tried to work on the haptic feedback and the accuracy of typing on this device. Um, and then we've taken that performance bump uh, on the device to allow it to perform faster. 